You don't have to see the staircase, just take the first step. Boy, aren't those great inspirational words for achievers, for dreamers, for those that have overcome adversity. When I look around me, I see people just like that. These young men that have chased their dreams for more than a decade in the sport of baseball. Obviously their dream, as you look out at this ballpark, the spring training home of the Boston Red Sox, is to reach the major leagues. Here's the thing, they're almost at the top step because in the first 16 years of this event, hundreds upon hundreds have bounced from here, years later, right to the major leagues. This is a collection of the 300 best that are heading into their senior year in high school. They have major league dreams and aspirations or domination on a college campus. This is the 2017 Perfect Game National Showcase. Young man, you ready? Yes, sir. Go get them. Last year at this very minute, this time, the first two picks of the draft were standing right here. There's a thousand kids that would love to be in your shoes right now. Hey, you guys are here because you're the best in the country. And we believe it, you guys believe it, all you gotta do is go out and show it. There are hundreds of scouts in there to see what you guys have to offer. We got radar guns out there for a reason. Let that ball go, show us what you got. You guys are at the level where you're about to be drafted in less than 365 days. Pitchers, you guys are here to shine on the mound. You each get two innings. These are some of the most important two innings of your life here. Get out there on that mound and blow them away. Everybody knows we picked the best players from this event, from these 300 and some players for the All-American game. Being selected would be a big like opportunity for me to showcase my talent. I've never played around so many guys that are so good. I mean, there's guys throwing in the 90s like it's just a normal thing. That's why I'm here, that's why I want to be there. I want to play with the best and show out and show why I can be the best. I think I shine best when I have a lot of pressure. Because I, I like the pressure. Just relax. I get up there, I take a deep breath, and I don't try and tense up because then I feel like things go wrong. It's kind of like everyone just has a big competition kind of thing out there, I like to see who can do the best. and have, what, 300 of the best players out here. And what separates, I think, good players from great players is that when they're like really humble about themselves and they're just as good as they are on the field as they are off. And you guys are that. And I, like, I think I, I look up to that. It would mean the world to me. That's a very big goal that I have, very big aspiration. This is something like, I know it's a very special thing. We aren't 100% sure of the guys we're gonna pick. No preconceived notions. You come out here and shine, there's a good shot, you're gonna get in it. We have managed to find a quiet moment in this ballpark because for a six day span in June each year, it's never quiet. Hi there folks, on behalf of 300 of the finest baseball players in the land heading into their senior year, my name is Darren Sutton. Welcome to the 17th edition, this, the 2017 Perfect Game National Showcase. Over the next hour, we are going to track behind the scenes how it all comes together. The 60, the speed, the arms in the infield and the outfield, the bats, the big bats, were there homers? Did they stay flat in the zone long enough? And then the arms, how did they handle themselves out of the windup and the stretch? Was there velocity that was epic? Was there spin rate that you'll never forget? Well, we're going to find out. And along the way, you will understand the short list and then the selection process each and every year for Perfect Games All-American Classic. When you think about this event here, let alone the All-American Classic, this event has produced more than 2,000 draft picks in just its first 16 years. This event had 14 first round picks this year in MLB's amateur draft. It's going to be a great journey. We're going to start it with four of the top 10 players in the country. 
We're going to get them together. We're going to go behind the scenes with them and uh, get inside their heads just a little bit. All the pressure and the fun that goes into the status that they've earned already. But as we get things going, you know, when we go inside their heads, they have to fix the hair on their head. Well, that's why I switched seats, because my little parts right here, my little line. I, I will give him this. He, he was wearing a hat all day today. You should get, like, a flat top, dude. No, he I, saw, I, try to tell, I try to tell him like to take it off and take it down top. the bottom. And he, I don't think it works that way. It. Like, I don't think it's that, like, thick enough. I like to keep it simple. Yeah. No, you need to be different. I don't need anything on the top of me. <laughs> we have no walks. We have no hit by pitch. But what we do have is we're putting a runner on because we want to put some pressure on that pitcher. Okay, you can't just nibble at the corners all day until you swing and miss. So we got full count. You're up here. Ball four comes by. Okay, we put a guy on first base. We keep the same number of strikes. We continue with that bat at bat until you either get on, get out, or uh, strike out. So I don't want you doing anything silly like going out there and throwing from the outfield or throwing from short or or running the 60 if you're not a runner. If you get hurt and you don't get a chance to put your two innings out there in front of these hundreds of scouts, I'm gonna feel terrible for you, but you're gonna feel worse. All right, so now that we clearly understand the rules and expectations, my goodness, allow me to introduce Perfect Games Vice President of Player Personnel, David Ronsley. David, let's start with the arms, and let's mm -hmm. just start with the pure strength and velocity. Well, we know, Darren, across baseball that velocity is on the rise, and we've seen it here in Fort Myers. We've got Kumar Rocker, 94-98, Ethan Hankins, 96, Mason Denneberg, who's not even a primary pitcher, throwing 97, and, and we just see mid-90s almost every game, and that's just the reality in baseball, even at this level today. We'll hear more about Mason in just a, just a minute. He's an interesting cat, to say the least, behind the plate, too. But there's more to pitching. There's more to pitching than velocity. You gotta be able to spin it, and there's a few guys that caught your eye. Oh, definitely. And you know, 94 is the new 90. So yeah, it, it's nice to watch. But watching pitchers pitch, and especially watching spin, you know, the good folks at MLB Advanced Media are trying to educate the public on spin rates. And Carter Stewart can be their A example. 6'6 six, six right hander from Florida, only throws 90 92, but his curveball. 3,300, 3,400 RPMs. That's like best in the big leagues type quality. And you can see it on the break, and he's just going to keep getting better. He's one of the top five pitching prospects maybe in this class for me, even with the low 90s fastball. Then you got a guy like Jonathan Gates. Gates comes out, throws 90, 92 again. You know, very solid velocity. He looks like John Lester on the mound. He's painting at 90, 92, 83 slider for strikes. Gets a strikeout on a changeup. K6 straight guys and looks great. Um, Braxton Ashcraft from uh, Waco, Texas, another 6'6 kid throwing 90-92 plus feel for three pitches, throw strikes, just going to get better. So velocity is great, but it's not the only thing as scouts we're looking for here. Ashcraft, interesting by the way, his dad Tony, a high level pro fast pitch softball player. But let's talk about that velocity. Let's go into the dugout. David talked about 98, one of the elite players in the 18 class, Kumar Rocker, did it right here. Here we go. Probably the best feeling is to stay relaxed. The adrenaline will kick in. Try to maintain it as best as possible and do what you know how to do. In my mind, it's, it's full energy. It takes a lot for that. And I'm glad it looks smooth. <laughs> First thing I felt comfortable, the drum was pumping, helped me out a little. Second inning came in, I settled in more. Guys came up, got some contact, and whatever happens, happens. The normal fastball, four seam, the curve, and the change up, circle change. Uh, I've had the same delivery since I was 10. The hand behind the head really helped me. Um, everything I heard was to get down the mound, arm angle up, don't drop your elbow, stay on top of it. I've played in those since I was little, and it came out as this. Baby. When I got there and pitched, really, I don't know. <laughs> there's not much to say about it. 
Kumar did his work on the mound, on the bump, and it was amazing work. But we're going to step off to the diamond and dive into the pool because in the Atlanta, Georgia area, there's a pitcher trying to get hitters like these guys out, but he's doing it having learned in the pool. Luke Bartnicki, not only that, he's got a summer job. Um, I think perfect game is probably the best thing that I've ever played at because it brings the best competitive that it, and me playing against competitive players makes me better, makes them better. It's just a really good environment and helps everyone out. Um, I actually had a little bit of pressure because this is the best players that perfect game has in my class and I know they're really good hitters. But the pressure actually kind of helps me, keeps my good to my adrenaline going. I'm like, okay, maybe just let me show myself, see what I can do. And I just, my main thing is to stay calm. You stay calm, you're gonna do good. Um, I've actually been a swim coach for four years now. This is my fourth year. And we have practice in the morning, 8.30 to 11, all, all to the middle, middle of July. Um, after that, actually, I'm also a lifeguard too. So I usually lifeguard at the pool that I just practiced, I just coached at or I can go to any other pool in my area. Another interesting thing about my swimming is I actually, if you watch me swim, I have a three quarters on top in baseball, also in swimming. So I'm actually kind of practicing my throwing motion every time I swim. I mean, practice makes perfect or makes you better than most people. And I just think it gives me the back strength better than most other baseball players. Kind of just wanders. I just think about all this other stuff, but usually when I do harder sets, I like to think about music or just happy stuff. But sometimes I think about baseball too, just I'm doing this to get better because sometimes I don't want to swim at five o'clock in the morning, but I'm like doing it to get better at baseball. This is my primary pitch. This is my two seam. Um, everyone says it has a lot of arm side run on it, so I like to use it a lot, especially against righties. Um, my four seam, this is my uh, run it up there a little bit pitch, um, throw it inside, jam some righties, jam them up. Um, this is my slider. Uh, if someone's on my fastball, I like to throw it a lot. Um, I'm getting a better throw for it like today. It's pretty good today. And then my changeup is for righties who have my, have my slider, have my fastball, and this is just another thing in the arsenal I can use against them. Uh, I find it kind of funny sometimes, but I'm like, I mean, you gotta, you gotta give them some credit sometimes because I probably couldn't hit myself. I'd probably look stupid up there too, but I find it funny, but after the game, I'm like, that was a good, <laughs> good job, but it's, it's a lot of fun. I would be really honored and I, I would be really excited to be invited to that. It looks a lot of fun. I watched, a lot, I watched last year and they all, they all had a lot of fun. I saw Royce Lewis get bucket dumped on him. It was, that was pretty cool. The environment just looks like a lot of fun. Love the story in the pool and on the baseball field of Mr. Bart Nicky. He may be pitching at some point to a great catcher along the way. Uh, his name is Will Banfield. He's a Vanderbilt commit, and he's the man that has caught your eye and everybody else's. And everybody else's, Darren. This may be the best catching prospect at this age since, since Bryce Harper had a face mask. Um, you know, he is that good, and, and he's a good hitter and everything. Um, he has the measurables, the throwing arm, the pop times, but what really stands out about Will Banfield is his athleticism. He's extremely flexible. He, he's got advanced shifting ability. He catches Kumar Rocker throwing 94-98, and he's sticking pitches on the outside corner and getting the strike calls. Um, he's played a lot, and it, but it's the athleticism. You see him catching, and it looks like he's a big league catcher right now. And he's got everybody in the scouting community very excited, and certainly us at Perfect Game excited about his future. You're kind of saying the same things, too, in the conversation among scouts about Noah Naylor. A big, strong, but an athlete. He's a Canadian Noah Naylor, and he's caught your eye. Well, no, what Noah does, he runs a 6'6'60". He plays shortstop when he's not catching. Um, and he's an athlete. And just like we we're talking about Banfield, what that athleticism brings to him as a catcher in the things he's able to do, shifting, blocking, Framing, you know, we, we see what happens in the big leagues now. Those are very important things, even more than the throwing arm and everything. And guys like Banfield and Naylor are that next generation of catchers due to that athleticism. The numbers, pop times, the very best from the catcher's mitt to the second baseman's glove. Some good numbers. Hayden Jones out of Indiana. Connor Pavoloni out of East Cobb, the area there, and has committed to Tennessee. A little bit further down on that list, probably jumped off the graphic. We talk about Mason Denenberg again. 
a 1.88, but yet this is a pitcher that throws 97. He's also a catcher. So it's an interesting story when you think about Mason. What will he do as he heads forward? Uh, I think scouts may help him make that decision. Maybe he'll be able to make it himself. Here's what we do know about this young man. He loves them both, and he also loves family a ton. It's really cool to see everyone like kind of succeed and just it's kind of like everyone just has a big competition kind of thing out there like to see who can do the best I mean you have what 300 of the best players out here and it's really cool meeting all of them like because you're gonna be you're playing against, play against them in the future and stuff so I think it's a pretty cool opportunity and I think perfect game all for letting it happen yeah I love catching I mean I love pitching I really love both and it's just gonna be hard to like try to pick one you know or have someone choose for me never really thrown as hard as I've threw today, but I normally am like 92, 94, but today I, I was like 96 to 97. And it's my first time that I realized that I didn't really have to throw off speed. And one of the, one of my, my coach told me one of the guys was like, he didn't throw a slider. He said, or he said, and you're his coach. He said, that's the reason, because he knows he didn't have to or something. So it was just, I mean, it was cool. My stance is pretty upright because me and my coach figured out that if I'm like standing up taller and I get down into my swing, I have a problem of like coming up when I when I finish my swing. And when I start tall and like finish, I, it's easier for me to like stay through the ball. And I'm really just trying to hit something up the middle, just look backside. And then if he comes in, I'm gonna pull it, I guess. I really like hitting off the tee actually. Like I'll just go up to the high school plenty of times just by myself and just hit 100, just 100 balls off the tee. Like, maybe like three times to four times a week. And then other days I'll go over to Orlando and I'll hit with the Merck and a couple more, a couple more and I'll hit with Elijah and Andrew and Joseph and it's just a good time over there. So my little sister was really sick when she was, I think 14 years old when she was an eighth grader. I was at a football game and the game got over. It was our a regional semifinal game we won and I came back and uh, my coach told me that my sister was in the hospital. And I didn't know what to do. Like, I was just, I was so bummed. I was like bawling my eyes out. I didn't know what to, I didn't know what to say. And then I visited her and she, she couldn't talk and she couldn't do anything. I just said a prayer for her. And I remember the next couple of weeks after that, she, she got better and she was, she was all right. Yeah, it really meant the world to me to see her. Like, like just, I remember she came home and she was like in a walker and I just, then I see her the next year, like win a state championship in soccer and just be starting as a freshman on the volleyball team. And, and now it's an hour. She's a really, really good beach volleyball player and she's committed to UCLA. And um, it's just really cool to see that. I feel like social media, like, it kind of makes you or breaks you for me. Like, if you're somebody on social media that, like, tries to showcase, like, how good you are or, like, just tries to just be cocky on social media, it's, it's like a no go for me. I like to see somebody that's like humble on social media yeah, and just they don't post. like bloat and just yeah. show everybody like, oh yeah, this is me on social media. I th I feel like social media nowadays is like it, it like you said, it makes or breaks you because um, another thing like coming back towards the pressure part of it, you know, they post these numbers, how hard you throw, how fast you run, and all these, and you have to live up for those expectations, you know, throughout your career. It's just part of the game mm -hmm. and. So, like you said, with the whole when people post these, um, you know, or retweet the numbers that they've yeah, done, and it may come off as cocky. Mm. Um, so, like, sometimes that's where it can be a negative, where our first impression of somebody that we haven't met yet, if we look and they're, like, retweeting something that they've done and stuff, right away you're thinking, wow, this guy's pretty yeah. cocky. Mm. But maybe he's really the maybe most... maybe he's not. you got to meet Exactly. Him. Maybe yeah. he's just happy for what he's done. Mm -hmm. um, but, I mean, that's why I think it can hurt you. So. Yeah. Definitely goes a long way at our age. Yeah. Going on someone's profile and seeing them, it represents them as a person, for sure. Could be cool, could be lame, you never know, but, like, it's big in this age. Yeah, I mean, especially, like, going on, like, kids' page, you're, like, you recognize the name, you click on the name, and it's just, like, you scroll down, and you're, like, oh, this kid's pretty, seems like he's pretty cool. Like, or, I, or I, like, like, I like thought him. this kid was different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, I, yeah. Thought, I thought this kid was a lot better than this. Yeah. Like, I'll be honest, the first time I met you was here. <laughs> I'll be honest, I'm straight up. Like, when I first met you here, we were doing that hit thing underneath the tunnel here, yeah. and 
I was just like, you know, he's a big name guy. I mean, I know who he, I mean, I knew who he was. I knew who he was. I knew who you were. And I was just like, you know, I wonder how he's going to come off. And right away, you shook my hand and yeah. I'm like, this kid's legit. Mm -hmm. This kid's legit. <laughs> yeah. And that's the same as for both of you guys, too. Like, I mean, I, I slapped you on the side of the scared <laughs> a meat tap on the side. <laughs> but no, like, you guys, are, like, what separates, I think, good players from great players is that when they're, like, really humble about themselves and they're just as good as they are on the field as they are off. And you guys are that. And, I, like, I think I, I, I look up that. to that. Is that you've been yeah, doing? It means a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love that stuff inside of the locker room, now inside of the dugout. David, let's shift gears and go to infielders. For different reasons, infielders catch the eye of scouts. Which infielders, as we make our way through the event, have caught your eye? Well, first of all, Darren, this is a big group of infielders here, very talented infielders. I'm going to break them into hitters and your classic fielding, you know, middle infield actions guys. We'll talk about the hitters in a minute minute but we've got a lot of those really true middle infielders defensively and nobody stands out more than Nander DeSades. DeSades, he's from Panama, he came to the United States a few years ago and boy has he gotten better as we watched him. Um, he's got a tremendous arm, he has, almost has Carlos Correa actions on defense, he's a switch hitter with big left handed bat speed and he's pretty much my favorite middle infielder at this event. It moves beyond that, though, because then we have a talented player who's a pitcher infielder who's stepping forward, certainly as an infielder, out of Southern California, out of South Hills High School, Brandon Dieter. You know, Brandon Dieter is interesting because, you know, the Southern California shortstop mode, you have a very polished player um, who isn't always very toolsy, the run and throw, but Brandon Dieter has tools. He's a 6'8 runner. We saw him throw 90 off the mound. And boy, does he have some really good right-handed bat speed. And he's a true middle infielder. He's going to stay at shortstop. And I think he's really opened a lot of eyes down here. We all remember the utility player and a longtime infielder in the big leagues, Benji Gill. There is a next generation. You really have enjoyed the work of Mateo Gill. Yeah, Mateo Gill. This is not a big class for sons of ex-big leaguers. We have a few. But Mateo Gill has really stood out. His dad played 400-plus games at shortstop in the big leagues. And Mateo's got a chance to play a lot more. He's a lot like his dad. He's also a prospect on the mound. But the way he swung the bat yesterday, his actions in the middle infield, I think he's going to get a shot at middle infield first. All right, David has the scouts take. Now let's take a look at some of the numbers. The biggest arm certainly on the infield throwing across the diamond. This does make a difference when you look at these big, powerful, strong arms. Uh, Nander on that list. Kendall Logan Simmons, Georgia Tech commit on that list. But at the top of the list, with a new record, Blaze Alexander, a local product not far from here, 99 miles an hour. He enjoyed chasing that number. I lived in Chicago area since I was seventh grade. I moved down eighth grade, got exposed to the PG events, and just been, I don't know, just chasing that number, obviously. I was trying to go triple digits, but 99, that'll, sell. that'll do. A lot of it's working out, explosive work. I, uh, I work out locally here. Uh, Josh Vogelback, brother of Dan Vogelback with the Seattle Mariners. Just a bunch of explosive work, working out. Obviously, Jager Bands, uh, Driveline Program, and that's just helped a lot. So I think freshman year, I looked at the number, and it was Lance McCullers, 98, and Carlos Correa, 97. And I mean, I thought I wanted to have that opportunity to break that, so I was going to put myself in the best possible position to break that. So, I mean, every time I threw, every time I was doing Jager bands, it was thinking about that number and beating that number, and thankfully I did. Honestly, it's just fielding the ball, getting over there, throwing it the first, and I mean, I know I got a big arm, I know it's accurate, and just make sure you field the ball first, put myself in the best possible position, point my shoulder to the first baseman, and let it loose. I want to be the best possible player wherever they want me in position, uh, whether it's shortstop, third base, second base. Uh, but I want to be the best, so I'm going to try to perform like the best. I do a lot of drills uh, without the glove, just uh, little like picks, like forehand, backhand, uh, front hands, and then I'll go back with the glove, forehand, backhand, uh, front, like forehand. And uh, yeah, it's just, I don't know, it's just blessed, obviously. Oh, got him. Cool. Wow, this is so cool. You guys are here because you're the best in the country. This is your moment to shine. That was gone. 
time manager McCutcheon. I want to congratulate all you guys on, on being in the perfect game. Wow, this is so cool. What? I can't believe what I'm seeing. This is amazing. This is crazy. Can't believe I'm actually here. Best seat in the ballpark. I always see you scouts come to watch a side swing. So watching side swings right now, let's talk about bats. But let's talk first about the great relationship that Perfect Game has with Diamond Kinetics. And, and it's a brand new relationship in which we're talking about great metrics to help grow and evaluate yourself. Things like max barrel speed, hand speed, trigger to impact, all a part of developing your swing. And then, of course, there is things like exit velocity. We love the great TrackMan data. It helps a bunch. And when you look at the TrackMan numbers that have gone on here, Aaron Sabato at 103, Jeffrey Holtz at 101, and John Malcolm out of Detroit on that list as well. Love the young man out of the Detroit Country Day. David, before I get you into all the hitters that you like, you have something for me on John Malcolm? Oh, John Malcolm, um, you have to love 6'4", 215 pound left-handed hitters with 100 mile an hour bat speed. We saw him at an event, indoor event in Toledo in February. Um, and just loved him, and he's really grown as a hitter. And to see that bat speed number about him, no surprise. All right, Nicholas Northcutt, he's up first. Nicholas Northcutt has really been an eye-opener. Um, we've seen him play a lot um, during the summers and tournaments, but he came here and put on a show with the bat. Huge BP, he's an aggressive hitter. He's a take-no-prisoners hitter, um, and it's a big league hitting approach. And uh, he's, we've just fallen in love with him. He's one of the top hitters in this class. Corner infielder, he's a Vanderbilt commit. Hunter Watson is committed to Texas A&M. Okay, Hunter, Hunter Watson, you know, I love big league comparisons. Corey Seager, there's a little Ooh. bit of, uh, of Seager in Hunter Watson. He's 6'4", 210 pounds. He has length. He loads real deep and low, um, but he has such fast hands that he gets the barrel of that in the zone all the time, on time, and really hits the ball hard. Jax Groshans just completed his freshman year at Kansas. He hit his first college home run against Texas. His brother Jordan was here. He's going to Kansas. He hit a homer as well. I don't know whether Jordan Groshans is going to make it to Kansas. No, no disrespect to Kansas, because he's one of the top hitters in this class. Again, I, I mentioned before, Northcutt's a pro style hitting approach. Well, that's what Groshans does. He hits the ball out front. He hits it hard. He had a double off the green monster. He had a ball over the green monster. And that's in the game, not in BP. And he took a great BP as well. He has all the hitting tools you want to see in a young right-handed hitter. Homers in this ballpark, everyone talks about homers. That was the first homer in this one. He walks us through the experience. Felt really good, really good. I, I got a good pitch to hit and I did something with it and I'm, I'm really happy with it. I went up there thinking after the 3-1 three, three count, he threw me another ball, so they said fastball is coming. I said just try to barrel it up. Just try to do something good with it and square it up, get in the gap, get an extra bag out of it and ended up going over. The big thing to me is my hands. I feel like my hand placement is, is well, then my path to the ball is well and I'll get a good swing on it and I'll barrel it up consistently. And then my feet, I don't try to get too wide. I have a simple leg kick. I just like to bring it up and set it down easy and fire. Um, the biggest thing to me is just relax. I get up there, I take a deep breath, and I don't try and tense up because then I feel like things go wrong. Just if I'm relaxed and my mindset's relaxed, my approach is relaxed, and it just comes easy. This is a field of dreams, there's no doubt about it, but then again, so is Petco Park. It's the place where all of the players dream of being. Let's talk about San Diego, California, because with the relationship and the All-American Classic, it has been a deep relationship with the community, Rady Children's Hospital. Since the birth of this event, 
More than $1 million have been raised to fight pediatric cancer. The players themselves raised $60,000 last year. Then there's the relation with the honorary chairman, Trevor Hoffman. Hoffman not only opens his home, he shares his wisdom, one out with 601 saves. And finally, when you think about the importance of the relationship, it's the banquet, the All-American Banquet and the Jackie Robinson Award. The first winner of that award, Justin Upton in 2004. Last year's winner, Hunter Green. Upton remembers winning the first award. Growing up in, in an African-American family, playing baseball, you, you hear you know, the stories of Jackie Robinson, you hear about the history of Jackie Robinson, then to be, to be honored with an award um, bearing his name is, you know, I mean, an awesome feeling, obviously, but, um, you know, the honor and, and being able to meet um, Rachel Robinson, you know, and receive that award, it's, it's kind of surreal as a, as a young kid, but now looking back on it, um, I'm even more proud of that award now. Um, and I look at what I, what I had an opportunity to do, um, you know, meeting the wife of, of Jackie Robinson. That, it's 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 you can't explain the the feeling later on in life knowing what that meant but at the time you know as a as a kid you're just you're just wide-eyed and, and enjoying the moment whoever wins that award wins it they'll win it in San Diego who doesn't love San Diego what a great rich tradition of sending players right down the street to the game Brady Aiken a first round pick Alex Jackson is a first round pick back catching again for the Atlanta Braves and a 1-1 two years back Mickey Moniak San Diego California Mason Pelio is one of those players that hopes to have that very same opportunity a unique game on the mound and a very unique family when we first start, just trying to throw as high as I can, as relaxed as I can, and then when I've reached my max distance, I go in about 40 to 60 feet, and then I start doing pull downs, which is throwing on a line as hard as I can to my throwing partner. And then I just go from the wind up and work on my grips. Lots of arm strengthening. Arm strengthening, um, arm conditioning, working out to till failure pretty much. Say you're doing like a curl, you keep curling until you can't bring the weight up anymore. But I just do that for everything. Really, this part right here and the, to the leg lift is all natural. It's just the same thing as I guess everyone else would do. But when I get here, I kind of lead with my hip more and then make sure I get a good arm swing because I've had a habit of just sticking it out, which, lose, which lost some velocity. And then as soon as I kept this arm path going, Non-stop, I just gained a couple miles an hour. This is my four-seam fastball. Um, this is my curveball. I throw a changeup like this, two-seam changeup, and a two-seam. When he was a teenager around the 80s, this whole bicycle freestyle thing blew up, and everyone wanted to do it. So obviously he fell in love with it, and he just worked at it like 8, 10, 12 hours a day. Just run like a, you get like a liter of Mountain Dew and then just go ride for the whole day. <laughs> and I guess I would get my work ethic from him because he was always above everyone else. Even when he felt like he did bad, he always placed above third place. She doesn't really like talking about it that much because she knows it'll draw attention to her and she doesn't like all that attention. But yeah, she was a Chargers girl for, I don't even, I don't even ask her about it, but she was a Chargers girl. She dances well, I know that. <laughs> and I, I don't know, I guess I get, I get my athletic physical side from her. It would mean the world to me. That's a very big goal that I have, very big aspiration. And I just, I just, when I first saw it, when I was like a freshman, I just felt like I wanted to be there. Best of luck to Mason Pelio, and if he makes the team in his hometown of San Diego, he's going to need some help running down baseballs in the outfield, certainly. Let's start with Joe Gray Jr. He has been catching your eye for quite some time. He's an Ole Miss commit. He's out of the great state of Mississippi. Yeah, and he's going to be the guy running down the ball. He's a pure center fielder, great speed, great route runner, even as a 17-year-old. We've already seen that. 
and he's a defensive first player right now. I think the bat will come, but he's the guy you want in center field uh, if you're a pitcher, most definitely. The Central Florida Gators have players all over the place. Elijah Cabell is one of those players. He's an LSU commit, and he is just fabulous. Yeah, Cabell is a, a big tools guy. He's got a great arm, classic right field tools, and of course with any right fielder, you're going to have the big bat, and he's got the elite level bat speed that can really drive the ball. Maybe the best pure bat speed in this class. You know who else is interesting? Alec Thomas, because this is a young man that's from Chicago, Mount Carmel. He plays football. He's a starting quarterback. And his dad, Allen, is with the Chicago White Sox. His specialty, strength and conditioning. Alec is carving his own path, though. Well, most definitely. And he's a Jacoby Ellsbury type athlete. He's not big. He's about 5'10". Very fast, very athletic. The football, he's going to be able to play football anywhere. Um, but what gets you, you know, it's a strength and conditioning thing, Darren. He's strong. He's going to develop that Ellsbury type power along with having the center field speed and quickness. And he's just going to keep getting better as he plays more and more baseball aside from instead of the other Number sports. Wisconsin, we're coming for you. And we're bringing Jared Kelnick out to San Diego. Now he's got to keep up what he's been doing, but he's been doing it, David, for an awful long time. This is an outfielder that has high skills and he keeps pushing his ceiling higher and higher. Every time we see Kelnick, he, he runs faster. He throws more. We all know he can hit. But what I like most about him is he plays the game so easy. He plays it with confidence. Even though he's from Wisconsin, he's played at so many high level events. And he acts like a baseball player who slows the game down so he can use those great tools as he has. And as the game gets faster, he's going to be able to handle it just fine. All right, the arms, by the way, no surprise. A lot of the same names that David is talking about when you look at the throwing velocity for outfielders at this, the 2017 National Showcase. Interesting final thought on Kelnick. Don't forget, he played up a year last year on the U.S. national team, was part of a gold medal winning team, again, playing with players a year older, went down and won the Pan Am Number games and won gold. Pressure. Do you guys get it? I mean, do you guys get it? You talk to each other about it. I, I, don't, about I, I don't feel any pressure. No. I'm like, I, I, I can catch a catch a fastball from Kumar or Ethan, like, it's, it's just no pressure. Just, I, I've done this before, and uh, I just try to go out there and show my game, and if I, if I do bad, then it's like, it's whatever it happens. Yeah, like, the pressure. yeah I mean, it's, it's going to be that way your life. It's not anything new to any of us, I don't think, like having people behind backstops with no, the, radar these guns. perfect game showcases. We have I mean, a ton of people new. watching us. It's, it's nothing different. We don't feel any pressure. We're just out here, and obviously they know like I think everybody's just, gonna fail at some point. At least. Yeah, we're like just trying to have fun. That's the biggest thing yeah. because the minute you like fall to the pressure that's being put upon us, yeah. that that's when you'll play bad. So, okay, us guys here, we're just trying to like get to know other people and just have fun because. You know, in this game may become a job, you know, after college someday, and you just got to have fun with it because it's going to last a while, and it's a kid's game, so why not have fun with it? Look forward to seeing and hearing from those young men all summer long and for the rest of their very bright careers. National Showcase Director Kirk Gardner, we've seen and heard from you throughout the show. Nice job, by the way. Uh, let's wrap by talking about the 60, the ultimate speed test for baseball, going all the way back, way, way back to war times. It's very important. Now technology has taken over. How do you get the 60 together because it's important? Right. We use a laser and we use a handheld. And the reason we use a laser and a handheld is because somebody trips a laser a little bit early. You want to make sure you have that handheld as a backup, and we're going to take whichever is the fastest. But typically, the laser is the fastest because a handheld starts on first movement, and a laser you can't miss. It trips and it trips. So that's the the best way to do it so we use a laser this year's national rain was a part of the story certainly so you guys will move the track if you have to for fairness even out of the stadium correct right we'll move it anywhere as long as we get a good fair track that these kids can run on a little breeze at the back maybe just something that keeps it fair for everybody at the same time so we can get a good judge of how fast these kids really are We'll take a look at the numbers, and the final day was very good to Georgia commit Cabrera Weaver, a 6.27. Vandy commit Isaiah Thomas rolled out a 6.38. And of course, Vinny Tosti, who is headed to Oregon out of Santa Rosa, California, he too was under a 6.5. By the way, you fired everyone up at the beginning of this. You know this, right? It's really easy to do. This is the most fun week of the entire year. The most the fun week. The best players are here. All right, the most fun week. But if you're truly the best, you get the invite. You get the invite and you get an opportunity to go inside of the Red Sox locker room. If you're one of the final 80 or so, you're a finalist for the top 50 for the Perfect Game All-American Classic. We're taking you behind the scenes. You are invited. You are a finalist. Yeah. Thank you.
Thanks. Yeah, how you, how you doing? Good, how are you? Good, you had a good experience here, yes, huh? Really Other good. than the weather, we can't really <laughs> do... Best competition. Yeah, it's awesome to play. It's a, get to face all the guys in the season. Yeah. Right now. now, where are you? Well, I'm committed to Kansas. KU? Yes, sir. Awesome. My brother goes there. Coach Price. Awesome. Yeah, they got it rolling a little bit yeah, now. His brother's up there. Right? <laughs> is he playing <laughs> baseball too or no? Yeah, he's just starting to catch his time. Oh, okay, great. I mean, I know he's a good baseball player, but you should be proud of him yeah, as a son. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's awesome. Well, we appreciate both sons doing, doing things with perfect games, so it's a joy to work with them. And as I said, more importantly than that, they're just good people. Certainly the game is is uh, something you'll remember for the rest of your life if you're selected, but it's a whole weekend. You'll come in on Thursday, August the 10th, the game's the 13th, and you'll leave the 14th, and it's a power-packed uh, agenda of, of enjoyable and meaningful um, activities beyond just the baseball part of it. Well, that'll do it. It's quiet around here. They got it done. This has been incredible. So this is just the beginning of an amazing summer for all of these talented athletes. First, join us on July 11th from MLB's Fan Fest at Major League Baseball's All-Star Game for our selection show just hours before the Midsummer's Classic. We'll tell you the 50 that are headed to Petco Park and then at Petco Park on August the 13th on MLB Network at 8 o'clock Eastern. It's again the perfect game All-American Classic. 50 of the finest baseball players heading into their senior year. It's a preview of the 2018 draft. As we say goodbye to all of you here at JetBlue Park, we want to do so by showing you the video behind the scenes that the players who made the shortlist invited into that locker room that they saw. The words of Justin Upton. Driven deep to left field. Way back and gone! It's a home run for Justin Upton! And the Tigers have a walk-off win! What's up, fellas? Justin Upton here, uh, Detroit Tiger. Being on that, on that field and playing with those guys, I felt like that was the first time where that much talent being on one field, I felt like, you know, this, this, is, a, this is an elite baseball game that I'm playing in right now. And I'm playing against the best. I mean, you, you go to these, you know, you go to different showcases and, you know, somebody brings their team from here. Somebody brings it. No, this was all the guys, the guys playing on one field. And it was, it was, it was special to be a part of. To showcase your skills, trying to show that you're the best is there's, there's nothing nothing more fun than that. Slider, ground ball, diving play at short, long throw across the diamond. Got him. When I found out I was selected, this, it was one of the best feelings I've you know I've had. I think the best comparison now is going, you know, I've been to an all-star game as a major league. I think it's the same kind of feeling. This is your moment to shine. You guys have been selected for a reason. You're all the best. Different guys brought in from all over the country, different teams, different backgrounds, all gelled together for, you know, for one game. And, you know, it's the best of the best. What a group. Uh, what a group to be a part of. The world that, you know, uh, we live in with baseball and, and the world that uh, the kids live in with here, you know, we're all able to just combine as one and it's just been a great experience. It's just a blessing to be here with all these kids. I'm having a great time. I know they are too, so it's exciting. impressed to announce your fundraising totals so far as of this morning the east was at 29 over $29,000 and the west was at $27,000 so that is pretty amazing congratulations on becoming a perfect game all-american Uh, you're the best of the best. Uh, carry yourself like the best of the best. Keep working. Have fun. 
and enjoy yourself.